To get started, I'll go ahead and grab these two shelves and head on out to the shop. Here I'm just using some blue tape to mark each shelf to make sure that I cut the grooves on the proper side later on. The first thing I'm going to do is cut some strips of hard maple to glue on the front of each shelf. This will cover up the plywood edge and also give these shelves a nice finished look. With the glue dry, I can head over to the table saw and trim off the extra length. Now I'll use a flush trim bit with my trim router to remove the extra thickness so that everything is nice and flush. I had to make a couple of passes because the flush trim bit that I had on hand was not long enough to cut the full width in one pass. Now just a little bit of cleanup with the chisel. The second shelf I actually had to make four passes to bring everything flush. Next, I'll switch over to a 1 8 inch roundover bit to soften the top and bottom edge of each shelf. We're now back at the table saw, and I'm switching over to my dado stack to cut the grooves for the vertical dividers. Using just the two outer blades gives me a groove that's just a fraction under a quarter of an inch. It's a perfect fit for the quarter inch plywood dividers. I've set the depth at a quarter inch as well. I spaced these cuts about an inch and a half apart, and for each setting of the fence, I cut one side and then flipped the shelf around and made the same cut on the other side in order to keep the spacing consistent. We may not actually use each of these grooves, but having them equally spaced and having extras gives us some flexibility for storing different size items. We're back to the regular blade now, and I'm cutting the vertical dividers from quarter inch plywood. And no, the video is not playing in reverse. I am actually pulling each piece across the blade backwards to score the underside of the plywood. This will prevent a lot of tear out on the underside of these cuts, as you'll see in just a second. And here's a close up of that cut, and you can see there's very little tear out on the bottom due to that scoring pass. I made the same reverse scoring cut on each of these pieces prior to making the cuts to final length. Each panel is now 14 and a half inches wide and about 21 inches long. I gave each panel a quick sanding with 150 grit prior to finishing. And just a little bit of hand sanding to knock down the sharp edges. The finish I'm using is General Finish's water-based high performance in satin, and I applied a total of three coats, and I'm just applying it using an inexpensive HVLP sprayer from Rockler. Okay, everything's had time to cure, so here we are putting things in place. After placing the two shelves in, I'll add each of the dividers and load it up with baking pans, cooling racks, and other items. Well, thanks for following along on this build. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I greatly appreciate you hitting that like button if you don't mind. And don't forget to get subscribed if you're not already part of the channel. We'll see you on the next build.